Gillespie, I'm the assistant curator and preparator here. Thanks, Ted. Yeah. Um, and it's my pleasure and honor to introduce Jay this evening. Um, Jay got his BFA at the Kansas City Institute in 1974 and his MFA at uh, UC Davis in 1976. He moved to Bozeman and began teaching promptly thereafter at MSU. He um, was a sculpture professor for 24 years and retired six years ago, where his studio practice um, picked up the head of steam that you see some of in this room. Uh, about a year, year and a half ago, Steve and I drove to, to Jay and his wife Catherine's house. Actually, we were picking up work of Catherine's for the triennial show. And we visited Jay's studio, and when we walked in, um, <laughs> it's about a fraction of the size of this room, 20 by 20 feet or so, and it was filled with like almost everything you see here besides the big paintings. Where they had this immediate, really kind of visceral and positive visceral reaction to the work. You could just feel it, and. and the more you look at it, the further you can go into the, the imagery is, is strong and powerful and, and Jay is obviously working. Uh, he's a prolific painter and sculptor. Um, this is the kind of work that man is really proud to exhibit. Uh, I mean, Jay essentially lives down the road, you know, Montana speaking, it's only a couple hundred miles. And, uh, someone like this who's worked in the state for 30 years and, you know, has this incredible body of work and is in the peak of his career and hasn't really been shown much in the whole state. So we're really proud to have Jay here and to have the show. So I'm going to turn it over to Jay because he's, he's got a lot more to say about this than I have. Yeah. Thank you all for coming this evening, and I want to thank John, he's been a long-term supporter of my work. He actually gave me a show when he was a student at the uh, University Gallery, like 12 years ago. Uh, and I'd like, really like to thank uh, the Zool Art Museum, it's been great to work with uh, the staff here, and a uh, great opportunity for me to, to uh, get this out of my studio and store it here for the summer. <laughs> <laughs> I, have some, I have some work, you know, room in my studio. To, uh, to work with. I mean, there's also, I'd like to thank Dalton. He's been playing music. He's been, he's, he's a Bozeman uh, yeah. musician, writer, singer, uh, big support. He runs the Cottonwood Club, which is a great venue for new art in, uh, in Bozeman. My collaborator, long term collaborator, is David uh, Dunlap, who we've worked on that piece, I'll talk a little bit later, and some of those. He's been a big influence uh, on The Living, Breathing Thing, which is a collaboration, big, been a big influence. I've been working a lot of collaborations lately, and my work's just sort of evolved. It's all one thing to me these days, so it's really hard to uh, define where one thing stops and one thing uh, you know, begins. Uh, I'd like to thank my wife Kathy, who's, who's suffered through uh, months of, uh, of droning chainsaws in our driveway <laughs> and sawdust, and uh, has always been a, a big supporter and uh, has uh, been a big part of my life. Thank you. Uh, so I, I went to Kansas City Art Institute, and uh, I grew up outside of Philadelphia, so I'm an Easterner. It will always be an Easterner in Montana because you never become a Montana unless you were born here. So um, I'm an Easterner living in Montana for 30 years. And, uh, you know, th that first move from the East Coast to Kansas City Art Institute, it was a great art school. It was just, uh, you know, I, the Fret Foundations class was just a real experience in problem solving. It had nothing to do with art, but just how to figure out how to do things, how to figure out things how to solve problems. And then I went to sculpture and there was like no teaching. It was just an open studio. You learn from other students. And there was a lot of fun, a lot of play. And you know, I thought it was just a great environment. Because you know, I think you really can't teach art. I, mean, I think it, it, 
at, at a school or an institution, you can really create an environment where people have fun just playing with each other, making art, and trying to figure it out uh, themselves. So I had a great education there. I went on to UC Davis. And uh, it's interesting, I always say, when I, when I was in the school, this is the mid-70s, early 70s, uh, you know, the, the, the art world was really defined. I mean, there was the New York Formalist School, Donald Judd, Richard Serra, uh, you know, uh, Robert Morris, and then there was like the, the Chicago School, uh, the Harry Who with Jim Nutt, A.C. Westerman was our god, I think, when we were undergraduates, and then there was, you know, the California Punk School, and all the, the alternatives from Donald Judd, it's all this great world of imagery, and people kind of autobiographical stories, and creating these crazy worlds with pictorial images and putting a lot of things from pop culture together. And you know, I think that's the art that, uh, as a student, that I fell in love with. And it's, it's still, as you can see, I think a big part of uh, my world. I always say I joined that team, and unfortunately that, that team lost. Uh, so it seems like the world's progressed more and more in uh, the other direction in some way. Uh, and then I moved to uh, Bozeman 30 years ago, so started teaching there, and uh, taught uh, sculpture and drawing. And uh, about six years ago, uh, it came a point, I was like 55, 56, and I just realized that, uh, you know, the clock was ticking, and then there was not time to really uh, you know, get my work done. So uh, I retired with a, you know, the idea that I was just going to start painting and working in my studio. And I really started in small paintings, about this big little oil paintings. And I just painted every day, having a great time. And I just it had myself thinking about, well, like, you know, I could just make these little paintings and be happy and, you know, go fishing. And do this thing. But, uh, but then, uh, I made the mistake of buying a uh, pickup truck on eBay, <laughs> and uh, that uh, somehow just changed everything. I, uh, I bought this pickup truck and then drove, it was in New Jersey, I was driving back, I stopped in Iowa City uh, to visit uh, my friend David Dunlap, and uh, he, I hadn't seen him in like seven or eight years. And uh, we used to do collaborative drawings and little notebooks and, uh, you know, work together, kind of pass them back and forth and I'd draw something and he would draw something. And I stopped at his house and I just started drawing immediately. And I was there like three days and I said, well, I gotta go back to my town. And he said, well, I'll go with you. <laughs> and uh, he literally, just as I was walking out the door, came out with a black bag left his whole house, a refrigerator full of food, and I really hate to think what he went back to. Got in my truck, and we drove to Montana. And I said, we hadn't seen each other in seven, eight years, so we were talking about a lot of things. And he uh, had taught at the University of Iowa, that's where I first met him, I had taught there uh, in the late 70s, and met him then. Actually, he was a teacher at Kent City Art Institute when I was there, so we've had a long-term relationship in, in kind of uh, in the art world, and uh, so I was driving, he was drawing, and then we just started talking this whole time. And uh, he was kind of frustrated with academia, you know, the, kind of how institutions sort of, you know, drain the, uh, the life out of art. I had that kind of same experience, or was that the same point in time. So during this trip, we were just talking, and that's how the free art school, that idea just evolved, and then we were talking about, well, Maybe there's this alternative. So the free art school is uh, just a fictitious art school that's an ideal art school that lives in our minds or out there in the world where there are no rules, there are no teachers, there are you, know, you just make art and you know, do whatever you want to do. I mean, also, we give out free art. I hope you all get a print there. There's, there's a little rack there that's part of, uh, part of the, the free art school. It's evolved in kind of a, into a kind of political movement. Uh, and my friend Dan, we were working when it came to my art, uh, into the studio, so well, we need to make some products, we'll just make these little black and white paintings. So we started, and then 
started putting them together and it looked great. And then we really didn't want to sell them anymore, so we just kept <laughs> building on them. And that's what that wall kind of you know, evolved into. It is uh, just this sort of a manifesto of this fictitious art school, sort of a political movement, or it's just a, you know, an old guy's just personal Fox News station. <laughs> <laughs> you know, looking at it, I guess. But, you know, for me, it's, it was a, a great process just to, you know, do these small paintings, not care anything about them. There's some very liberating about, you know, just doing these on a daily basis. You have a stupid idea, you just do it, and you just put it up there. And, and uh, you know, that was a kind of a real liberating experience. And I think if you look at those, that stuff is kind of filtered out into, you know, everything. So, you know, the, the, that's for me is kind of like a sketchbook uh, that, that uh, you know, just be, keeps evolving. And I keep working on those and adding. My friend David, I think, did like four or five of them. And then I, I mean, I think there's, we're up to like 250. I did all the other ones just because I, you know, kind of kept it up and I'm more interested in it. Uh, also, during this uh, road trip, uh, we were talking, and we did, you know, he just said, you know, we're, he's 72, so he's, he's like 10, you know, 11 years older than I am. And, you know, we're just, you know, and I think we've always had this life in art. We always had similar ideas, the kind of art we like. And, you know, I think we're real passionate about art. He says, you know, when he, he's in the university, he says, you know, it's my church. You, you know, don't mess with it, you know, the, the art. And that's why I think that, as I said, when institutions kind of get involved, it gets more complicated. So the other thing about the Free Art School, for a while he was wearing a pirate flag on his back <laughs> as kind of a, uh, you know, a reaction to his school. And that's kind of how the skull uh, became the, the flag for the Free Art School. Uh, so during this trip we said, well, we're two old guys. We're a little pissed off, but we really have absolutely nothing to lose because, you know, we're like so old that nobody really cares what we do. <laughs> And, uh, you know, in the art world, especially now, you know, even when you're beyond 30, it's a little too late for you. So that also, I think, was uh, something that was really liberating, you know, really, you know, we could, you know, we're old, we're a little pissed off, but we got nothing to lose. And then we said, well, we're still li living and breathing, and we still have this passion for art. So that's how, you know, we kind of work together. And David came out two weeks ago and we started working uh, on this painting uh, and created this collaboration between the two of us called The Living, Breathing Thing. We've done a bunch of shows. This is just one evolution. Uh, I'll show you some other images here from uh, some other pieces uh, that we've done. Uh, this is a show, these images are just a show that we had at uh, Willow Creek, which is a great art venue in Willow Creek, Montana, uh, run by David Kirk. And uh, so David and I started the Living Breathing thing, uh, then Dalton and Jesse Albrecht also have collaborated with us and worked on this piece, which was a large installation. There's Dalton right there, you'll see some more pictures of him. Uh, so we started just working on paper because we figured, you know, you know, we've been making art, you know, together we have over 90 years of experience and we know how awful it is to haul art around. So we just started making it on paper. Actually, the whole show fit behind the, the back seat of my pickup truck, you know, <laughs> to, to take it. So we just started pinning paper and painting and, uh, you know, working on uh, this... Uh, this, uh, there's another one of my shirts there, uh, fill in a whole space with, uh, with images. And, you know, I think that the way that we work, just putting things together, that evolved into me personally, you know, putting paintings together, and just sticking things up there, that kind of freedom. I mean, I always used to make paint square paintings in that box, and I always wish that you know, I had more space to put the rest of that painting in or something else in. And that, you know, the th I think that art, you know, you have these rules and you say, well, you can't do that, you know, because it's a painting. Well, the, you know, so 
I know it's, it's, it sounds ridiculous that you can't break those rules, but I think as artists you are always constrained by you know, you know, rules that you make up for yourself and it's hard to break out. So a lot of this work is about you know, and, and breaking these rules and a lot of that came from you know, working collaboratively. Someone else does something, you put something on it. It really is a, a, a liberating process. We made this uh, musical shopping cart that Dalton did a great job performing. Uh, <laughs> it was a great hit. There's a the local Willow Creek uh, fire department there. Big time appreciators of the. <laughs> we, we face painted some kittens. <laughs> Anyway, you kind of get the idea, it's sort of a free-for-all installation, just spatially, and just packing things in. Most of it's low-tech, just paper and paint. Uh, that, this painting has actually been, it was in this show, it was in another show we did last summer with Dalton and with Jesse and Jonathan Rainey. So we just keep painting on the same paper, so it's economical that way. <laughs> Uh, so after, the, so the, after this uh, car trip, Dana and I you know, started these collaborations, and then the summer after that, he got invited by some of his grad students to go to this uh, show in Portland for this other collaboration of this group called Paytalica, which is a group they started in Iowa City as grad students. Uh, they were, they were kind of tired just about of the, you know, the, just the regular critiques, you know, where everyone just sort of says polite things to each other, and they decided that they were going to have critiques late at night and get really drunk and have really <laughs> critiques. And uh, it evolved into, well, instead of just critiquing, let's get really drunk and make art, too. So it, it evolved really from that, uh, you know, that beginning. And, uh, And so it's a group that uh, now gets together and, uh, and uh, works collaboratively as a group of 15 artists. And uh, this is one of our probably wilder events. This was in, uh, this was in Los Angeles uh, that uh, we did. This gallery is closing down and they just wanted to have a show there their last night. And they, so this is all up here. We start at seven o'clock and probably work till seven o'clock uh, the next morning. And uh, you know, I, I, mean, I, I sometimes I say that that I'm like a tick that was was in a tree, and I waited for uh, this to come by to jump on and just suck the blood out. <laughs> and, uh, because it's. Uh, probably the most fun making art that I've ever had. Uh, and, and for me, it's been so uh, really influential in, in the way I work. Uh, there's periods in here where you paint on something like you paint on, you know, the, whatever you want on there, and somebody would just come and smear paint over. And if you liked it, you paint it back. And sometimes I did that four or five times. And what I realized is, you know, that there's a real richness to that process and that image really, Yet has this kind of energy and rawness to it. So now I try to, you know, put that into uh, my my own work, and I try to do that to myself. It's just sort of smear paint over something that I just painted and build back into it. Uh, that's my friend David there, uh, and uh, so we've done a lot of these uh, events. It's, it's also very performative. I mean, there's a lot of activity. 
Uh, in this event, they uh, did the first chainsaw sculpture, which uh, you know had an influence. I mean, that's how I started chainsawing. They, they did it out in front of this gallery, and I said, uh, this sculpture right there, and I said, man, that, that's like, this immediate process, they threw paint on it, and it, you know, it, and it it's really has a, this raw power to it. So a couple years later, I started just doing my own chainsaw sculptures, uh, and you know, when I carve them and and, and uh, you know, have a raw piece of wood, it's also like a painting. So as I said, I've always made like painting and sculpture together, but I never felt like they really became the same thing. And now, I mean, I really don't see any uh, you know, difference between the paintings and the sculptures. I mean, it really is the same kind of feel and energy and process. Uh, so that's kind of the background to all this work. Uh, if anyone has any questions, I'll be happy to answer questions. Uh, yes? Can you model the painting you give tonight on the back of your shirt? <laughs> Yeah, it looks good on the black light here. I think of the black light there. Nice. <laughs> so this is a, I started painting these shirts. I've got like six or seven of them. Uh, in Paytalic, you know, people just started painting on your shirt. I said, well, I'll just pre give a preemptive stripe on that. I'll just paint on it. And then, you know, they'll be less inclined to, uh, to paint on it. But it is also, I think, in this, when this kind of process gets gone, I mean, it's just like art mud wrestling. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's a, I mean, you can't, I can't explain just the chaos and the energy. And, uh, you know, it's, there's something real invigorating about that. I mean, you know, I think that when I come back, I'm fully ch you know, charged up. I think a lot of the way I work, I mean, I think in some ways I owe working with this group, you know, a lot. because. Uh, you know, as I said, I was just happy doing these small paintings and the kind of tight paintings that I don't think uh, I would have had kind of the vision to do these or the knowledge to do these uh, without working with these collaborative groups. I think it's been, as I said, it's been a, uh, a real, you know, shot for me to, to have that. Also, it's nice too, but, uh, you know, one thing, as bad as you know, the, the administration in a politics university, you still love art students and you still love being in that environment where young people want to make art. So this, you know, I still get to hang out with guys like this. So if, <laughs> who wouldn't want an art student like that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, have to ask that <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> uh, you know, Paytalica listens to like just really awful, awful rap and energetic music, and uh, somehow I've been infected by that bug. So I listen to the worst music you would ever want to. You could have it all. Yeah. You know, you can't even listen to it. Oh, the yeah. worst music. <laughs> and there's some bad music out there. <laughs> you listen to it really loud? Yes. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah, when it gets gone. <laughs> yeah, I know. So. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I, it's part of the work, man, that, you know, that energy, that I, you know, the music. Yeah. And, you know, this is new. I used to listen to pretty quiet music. I think it's as the work kind of amped up, the music amped up, you know, that I listen to. If you're running a chainsaw, you don't want to be listening. Then I don't have that. I have, I'm Darth Vader. I have the earplugs. I have a full face shield. And, yeah, I'm totally, I mean, it's so much dust and you know, noise. I'm totally, you know, encased. It's almost silent, you know. Can you talk about any of the underlying messages that might be in some of the <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure. It's pretty yeah. obvious. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I think I've always been, even you know, from the you know, beginning, my work's been, has really subtle political messages. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I think that, you know, the political problems or, or the issues out there aren't that subtle anymore either for me. So I, and I think that, too, with the music and the art and the politics, it's all amped up. Uh, you know, I think... Uh, uh, I don't know, I think it's pretty obvious about... You know, my, my political ideas, where I come from, I mean, basically, I, you know, I say, I think our culture, our civilization's a runaway train, you know, just d devastating the, the planet, you know, I think that's basically, and when you have that philosophy, you know, nothing else really matters. I mean, it, you know, if you can't deal with that issue, then, you know, no issue really matters. So, uh, you know, I, I try to, so I, I try to paint that runaway train, you know, the runaway culture, and have images that, uh, you know, portray that. I think things are out of control. I mean, I voted for, you know, Barack Obama. I think that, you know, in that painting, you know, the issues, I mean, that runaway train's just in control of him. I mean, it's not like we're in control of it anymore. And uh, I think that uh, that's the way I feel. For me, it's, it's uh, you know, it hits me. It's frustrating. I make this work purely, you know, selfish, because that's how I deal with it. You know, I feel like I have a voice, I'm, you know, I at least can, you know, say something the way I feel about that. And it makes me feel not fine, but it makes me able to, you know, go to the next day in some ways. So I think that, for me, there's an urgency to that, and I think the work shows that urgency of that message. Yes. So, Big Daddy Rock. Yeah, big influence. Yeah, hot rod culture. But, you know, I think it's not... So, 1971, or no, 1963. Six. I right in there. Right. Were you doodling Big Daddy Rock in the school of right. <laughs> No, I wasn't. I was never. But I've got a sad, a, an interesting story. I actually, my grandfather, who actually... He, my grandfather uh, grew up in high school and his family owned the Vaudeville Theater in Chester, Pennsylvania. He worked the Vaudeville Theater. And, uh, and then, you know, it all collapsed is when the movies came. So he became a carpenter working in an iron foundry. And somehow, you know, he had a heart attack and had to come live with us and live with us. So he basically raised my brother and me. And uh, he had this love for the theater and art and kind of blue collar culture. So he would take us to every carnival, freak show, amusement <laughs> park. He'd take us to art galleries. I mean, it was really, you know, if anybody has the most influence, probably is that. So we go to the car show in Philadelphia. I think I was like 12. Big Daddy Ed Roth is there, hand spray painting, rat fit t-shirts. <laughs> and, uh, and I got one. But I think my mother threw it away. <laughs> oh, man. I died to have that thing there. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I think my, as you, I mean, I think it's obvious, my, I, mean, I like that. I mean, you know, I think in the 50s it was this kind of glamorous area, era, cars and things, and now, you know, it's, it's what's killing us, you know, that kind of hyped up revving energy. So, uh, so for me, you know, that's, you know, what all this is, is it's, hyped up burning of energy. And that's why, if you look, I mean, there's two things. There's a lot of fireworks, and uh, that comes from two things. Pentalic, we just had a thing in Las Vegas where we just went and just bought all these fireworks and just blew them off in this big field, which was a lot of fun. But also, it's like, you, do, you spend this money on them, and it's like, you burn it up, and it's like, what do you have? I mean, and, and you know, it, a lot, there's a lot of these images, you know, they're kind of metaphors for, you know, burning, you know, we're burning up a lot of stuff now and, and not really sure what's, you know, what we're burning it up for. So, you know, that for me is a great image for, to express that. Yes? Do you, um, is the Paintalica group, maybe I need to go to see what their manifesto is, but do you think they're motivated in, similarly about, you know, the sort of the runaway train? Uh, I think they're less political. Than, less political. Yeah. But, I got that feeling from what I was watching, right. but I wondered. Yeah. But they are runaway trees. They are. The <laughs> <laughs> so, but, uh, I don't know. I mean, there's a, there's a, I bounce on, and I think that, uh, you know, what I say, I think that, you know, what they do, I, I don't know if the, the, uh, 
the art's that great that's always comes out of there. I think there's just interesting things. I think it's a lot about the process. I think it's about all about the culture. I mean, really, it's a tribe, which is interesting yeah. to me. That you know, that takes art making back to it's, it's origin. Totally you know, what, why it is, and that's what I get out of it is that you know, when we all come together and create an image. I mean, there's some real power to that image. I mean, a lot of these images come from that. Just because it's not just me. It's it's like when 15 people agree that something's interesting. You know, I think I believe in that, and uh, so that's what's interesting about that to me. And it seems, you know, there's something real raw and basic and, you know, beyond art. I mean, it, you know, I think a lot of art now just becomes really pretentious. It's all kind of really thought well, out. It, and it's, it's, it's they all, are totally you know, embodied. This is right. totally, you know, not that. I mean, yeah. so it, in some way, I, mean, I think it's a real interesting, you know, area to work in for me. And then, as I said, I try to, you know, it, it, I'm always behind the curve on on that. I mean, if you look at that collaboration there with those panels in front and, you know, the sculptures, I mean, that's probably where this is all moving, you know, to more of that kind of world. I don't know. I'm always behind that curve, I feel, but that's that's good. Um, I know where to go. I'm ahead. Yeah. <laughs> some, some, some. I think you should be teaching. I think you're... No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. It's, it's so, uh, uh, Right. Freedom. Yeah. But and it's there with the the Paintalica group. Right. But it's it's not back here in Montana. Right. So. But he he teaches me. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, I think it's still in. I mean, uh, I, don't know. I I think if, if there's an ideal, the free art school ideal teaching situation. But you know, I mean, you, you teach in a class and half the people don't even want to be there. Or yeah. I can't even yeah. show. Yeah. I don't know. It's just too. It's too much. I mean, I'm having so much fun now, and I feel like, actually, I am having more of an impact now, and, uh, you know, I don't have to deal with any of that. I mean, there's a freedom to that, and, uh, you know, as I said, I, I miss parts of that, but I still feel like I, I get it, you know, with, with, I mean, we work in Bozeman with a group of people, the Paytalic, we work together. Uh, I don't know, it's, it's tough. Teaching's tough. It's a, right, but it's when a, you were it's a hard work. You had William Wiley and Roy DeForest and Cooley that were sort of doing that. I did. That that was a great art school. As I said, I did great art. Art school used to be great. I don't right. think none of my teachers could be teaching. You know, Ken Ferguson, who taught ceramics, could not. He wouldn't last a year in in a, in a university now. My teacher, Dale Elder. He couldn't last a year. I mean, he, he used to like punch people out for you know doing things wrong. I mean, you just can't do that stuff. I mean, Ken Ferguson used to like ridicule students so bad. He was so bad. But you know that that was great teaching because you there, it was powerful. I mean, it was something else. But I don't know. Institutions can't accept that now. They just can't. I mean, it just can't happen. That's why you need. Well, it is, but it's it just it's fictitious that it's going to stay that way. It's, it's, all, it's always perfect when it doesn't interact with the real world. <laughs> and now, you know, I'm the student. And I say I, I learned more about art and making art since I left teaching than, than I you know did the whole time I was teaching. And I, and I think this work reflects that. I mean, it's like for me, it's it's I'm the I'm the student. I said I learned more from Pentalica. Or from working with my friend, you know, David and Dalton, than I did, you know, my whole time teaching. So I, I like learning. I like learning better teaching. And I, I don't think I ever had the personality. I, mean, I think that you know you have to be. I don't know. You, but you can be at Kansas. You have to be like a missionary, you know, to teach. You know? So not, I guess I He's never really felt that strong yeah. about being a missionary. Exactly. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? <laughs> anyway, thank you all for coming. I really